happy little games. One-on-one -on -one fighting games sure are a lot of fun. There is something oh so satisfying about strolling into your local arcade, dropping a quarter into the slot, and kicking somebody's teeth out. When I was just a young, dumb, and full of gum, Patman QC, I saw the Karate Kid for the first time and I was mesmerized. The sights, the sounds, and the bone-crunching action made this an instant classic in my eyes. It was around this time that I got to play my very first one-on-one -on -one fighter. This game blended not only fantastic graphics and playability, but it also had a great story to boot. No, I'm not talking about Super Strip Fighter 2, The Revenge of Chesty LaRue. I'm talking about the Technos-developed Data East release of Karate Champ. What major franchise was influenced by the creation of this game? What lawsuit occurred because of this game? So wash your karate gi because it's go time! You know karate? I uh, know. Good. This is the history of Karate Champ. Technos Japan started developing arcade games back in 1982. The first game was titled Minky Monkey and is a bit of a ripoff of Donkey Kong Jr. They would release a couple more moderately successful games such as Eggs and Dami. In later years, the company would revolutionize the arcade industry with the first to beat him up with Kunio Kun in Japan. Double Dragon here in the States. Prior to that though, they brought forth another industry staple which would be the one-on-one -on -one fighter. To be fair, there had been previous attempts at head-to-head -head fighters in the past, such as Sega's Heavyweight Champ, which was released in 1976, but was a boxing game instead of martial arts. In 1979, Warrior was released and showcased two dueling knights in beautiful monochrome vector graphics. In the fall of 1983, Technos decided to try something new with their next arcade game. The higher-ups in the company were big fans of martial arts cinema, including the exciting exploits of Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon, and in particular, the tournament setting. They were also fond of wacky Jackie Chan and all of his goofball antics. They decided to merge the two together and create something that hadn't been done before. Karate Champ kicked and punched his way into the arcades in 1984. This is a one or two player game that was developed by Technos Japan and distributed by Data East. As the story goes, you take on the role of a so-called karate kid who enters a tournament to become the best around and nothing's ever gonna keep you down. At the start of each game is a practice session which allows you to practice the various moves in the game. Unbeknownst to a lot of people, there were actually two versions of this game, so the first one we are looking at is the original Karate Champ. 
You control your fighter by using two joysticks instead of buttons. The left stick controls your player's movement and the right stick unleashes various moves depending on which direction you press. There are a total of 24 different moves in the game which was unheard of at the time. After unleashing your move, you do have to hold the joystick down the entire time the animation is played, otherwise it will cancel out the move. You can also block various moves by pushing back on the joystick, which again, is something Street Fighter lifted a number of years later. Something else you noticed right away if you are a fighting game fan are the colors of the geese that the characters wear. One will wear a white one and the other will wear red. There is no health meter in the game, but each attack that lands earns either a half point or full point depending on where it's landed. The first character to reach two points in the round is the winner. After successfully landing a point, a commentary bubble above the judge's head tells you exactly what move you performed. The game also used digitized speech with the announcer calling out fight and winner. After each successful round, you will encounter one of three bonus stages. You either need to evade the flying objects, break every piece of wood, block of ice, or knock the piss out of a charging bull. The game loops endlessly until you eventually die. Begin. An updated version of the arcade game was released that same year entitled Karate Champ Player vs. Player. This introduced a bit of a story mode and 12 different levels all with new backgrounds. You are now fighting for the love of a girl who they show before each match. This one does actually have an ending but it will take you quite a bit of time to get through. After beating the final character your big head grows even larger with excitement. After this, the game is over. The game was a huge success when it was released in the arcades and inspired a number of other arcade fighting games such as Yi'ar Kung Fu and Street Fighter. John Tobias, who is the co-creator of Mortal Kombat, has stated in interviews that Karate Champ directly influenced the creation of his game. Data East brought a lawsuit against company Epic Software due to their game World Karate Championship being a bit too similar to Karate Champ. The courts initially sided with Data East, but then the decision was appealed on the grounds that it lacked substantial similarity between the games because all karate games look similar. The game is also well known for being shown in the Jean-Claude Van Damme Oscar-worthy performance of Bloodsport. Thanks to the retro resurgence from a few years ago, we ended up getting some pretty cool new collectibles based on Karate Champ. The coolest in my opinion is the tabletop version. Well, at least the cabinet is. Once the game starts up, you'll soon realize it's actually the NES version that you are playing and not the much superior arcade version. Speaking of the NES version, we might as well get this out of the way. The NES version was released by Data East in 1986. This was one of the only conversions to feature two button playability and did it succeed? Unequivocally not. To be fair though, nothing was going to emulate the twin stick approach especially back in 1986 but surely something could have been done about these horrible controls. The game is pretty much unplayable because there is no consistency in your attacks. 
And this isn't 2022 stumpy Batman QC talking, but this goes back to 1986 when I still had five digits on each hand. For example, you might try to do a forward kick and end up doing a reverse leg sweep instead. A couple of moves later you could try the same move again, but only this time it would work. I guess if the controls were responsive, that would be one thing, but your character feels like he is swimming in mud. The graphics sort of resemble the arcade game, but the animation is atrocious. It's as if Terrence and Philip took karate lessons, which for what it's worth is definitely an episode I would watch. <laughs> the game is also notable for being full of glitches and bugs, including downright crashes. To be fair, the game does feature some pretty clear digitized speech which was extremely rare for the NES, especially back in 1986. The previous year, the game was released on two computer platforms, the Commodore 64 and the Apple II. The game was a monster success on the PC front and was one of the top selling computer games for five years in a row until June of 1989. Rather than release the first arcade title, they decided to go ahead and port Player vs. Player but just release it with the moniker Karate Champ. The first computer game we are checking out is the Apple II version. Yes, the colors have migrated for the season, but overall it's not too bad, especially when compared to that turd of a game on the NES. Some of the sprites and graphics are changed a bit, including the judge who now looks very similar to Lisa's bully from The Simpsons. The characters both sport different hair colors and one player even has a different colored karate gi. Colors and different graphics aside, it's not animated too badly and it puts the NES animation to shame. Something else it puts to shame is the playability. Even though you're only allowed one fire button, it still plays pretty well and you're able to pull off most of the attacks that were featured in the arcade game. The sound effects and music leave much to be desired. A briefy, queefy jingle plays at the start of each round. As far as the sound effects go, I've heard louder farts from a mouse in church than I heard in this game. The good old Commodore 64 version is the best home version in my opinion. The controls are fairly responsive and your character will do exactly what you tell him to do. Once again, we only have one fire button but most of the moves seem to have made the transition. For an early Commodore 64 game, this definitely looks the part with clearly recognizable sprites and backgrounds. The animation is fairly smooth and the gameplay is nice and snappy. The sound effects are decent, but unfortunately the speech did not make the long journey. The game was released for the Android and iOS platforms in 2010. This wasn't just running under emulation as it includes new features such as a difficulty mode and the ability to play over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. The game was released as part of the Arcade Archives and the PlayStation Network in 2015. It was also released as part of the Data East Collection Volume 1 for the Evercade, which is a compilation of 10 classic NES titles. That's right, I said NES and not Arcade, so sucker beware. Make no mistake about it, Karate Champ revolutionized the one-on-one -on -one fighter. Sure, there have been better fighting games that come along, but this one was a trailblazer and is still a lot of fun to play, 
provided you have two sticks and stay the hell away from the NES version. If you've never had a chance to travel the world all the while punching blocks of ice and kicking bulls in the face, you might want to check this game out. You'll be glad you did. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Thank you so much for watching.